I've been uh, in, in Old Testament studies. Uh, I've been I've been looking at uh, what kind of king the Lord is looking to rule over his people. The Lord was looking to rule over his people in the historical books, uh, and what the Lord was looking for was a, a a thing called a vassal king or a servant king, as we were just singing. What I found striking uh, is this notion of a vassal king, and I felt the Lord leading me to prepare a word about what it means to be a vassal to the Lord, not just as a king but in everyday life, not only as a king, as I say, but for us as uh, God's people and our service to the Lord. Jesus, as I just read, was the ultimate example of how we should be servants to God, vassals to the King of Kings. In 1 Samuel uh, chapter 8, in verse 6, uh, the, the Israelites uh, told Samuel, that they wanted a king. Uh, and the Lord, Lord said to Samuel in verse uh, 7 of First Samuel 8, And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people, and all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them, according to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto the, their voice, how be it, yet protest solemnly unto them and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. The Lord gave the Israelites the king that they wanted, but not the king that the Lord wanted. He uh, gave them, he gave them Saul, the king Saul, in judgment. The Lord wanted a king that was after his own heart, and that man, that that king, was David. And the Lord, and the Lord Jesus, uh, is, and, and David are excellent examples of what the Lord is looking for, not just as kings, but as uh, what what the Lord is looking for from His people in service to Him. The Lord, as I say, wanted the. Uh, Wanted a king after his own heart. And tonight, brothers and sisters, the Lord is looking for men and women after his own heart. The type of king the Lord wanted was a, a king that was subject to the Lord. And what a blessing is ours, brothers and sisters, that we are a, that we serve the Lord, that we have been saved, and that we've got the privilege to bring this nation before the Lord in prayer. I was considering my last essay, as I just said, that uh, the type of king that the Lord was looking for. Uh, and that, this word vassal king uh, kept coming up. So what is a vassal? A vassal is a person regarded as having a mutual obligation to, the, to a lord or monarch. This was the type of person God wanted as his king, someone who was aware of his role in God's kingdom. Kings in Israel were anointed with oil, but there was evidence uh, where Israel's neighbours, that it was only uh, vassal kings that were anointed because great kings uh, weren't anointed. As I say, it was only the vassal kings or vassal lords that were anointed. This suggests that in Israel, the king may be regarded as a vassal to the Lord. And that, co that, that comes from uh, Arthur, Arthur Cundell's commentary and Judges. I got a blessing with meditating on the type of king that the Lord was looking for, uh, was looking for in, in a king, and by extension, a leader, a pastor, and us brothers and sisters as Christians. The vassal was completely aware of his dependence upon a superior king. And when return uh, for this vassal uh, to, to a greater king, the vassal enjoyed military support and security, which would have come, which would have came in handy with, uh, with regards to trade routes and keeping the law in order. In return, the vassal was required to send uh, his people uh, in military conquests and pay tribute to that great king. And brothers and sisters, what, what a blessing is ours that we get to uh, live our lives in service to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What a blessing is ours out of five million Scots that we, this wee group of people, are able to gather together and pray 
that God would move in mighty power to a nation that is so desperately needing a move of God. What a blessing that we have, eh, eh, that we're not just saved by works, eh, but we've got a responsibility eh, to, to serve the Lord with all our heart, soul and might, and we lead our lives in honour and thanksgiving to the Lord. We're a holy people and we're set apart, and that should thrill us. I mean, it thrills me with the life I've led and the, the times that I've let the Lord down. I backslid, I say that every time I preach, but I think it's important to stress. It's a sinner speaking to you right now, a sinner that deserves hellfire and damnation, but God, God loved me and he loved you. That's thrilling, brothers and sisters. When we come before God in prayer tonight, that we can be servants to the Most High God. What a great honour and what a great privilege is ours. You may be thinking that this might just be another prayer meeting. I hope it's. I hope you're not, and I'm pretty certain you aren't. But uh, and you might be thinking, when is this revival coming? The beauty of being a vassal to the Lord or a servant to the Lord is we know that the Lord is sovereign. Not only is He sovereign over all, but with regards to the things that we're praying for, the Lord's timing uh, is perfect. And uh, what we are praying for, uh, what we are praying for is not just for ourselves. What we are praying for is for the glory of God. What a thrill it was on Wednesday night when my brother Robert was telling us about his sister-in-law. Uh, that is that is God answering prayer. I remember uh, praying about this, uh, uh, this woman, Linda, and I was saying, oh Lord, when are you going to move? It seemed like there was two steps forward and one step back. But God, God moves in, his, in a wonderful way. And God used the doctors in a wonderful way. That thrilled, my, that thrilled my heart. And even when I get in for work and I read that text message from, uh, from Alison about, uh, about how Mike and Elizabeth met Gail and Anne, that was, that was, that was such a blessing that uh, Ruth was able to say that Gail was looking, looking really well. Over the past year, eh, I've been thrilled with the, like I'm sure you have been, with the answers to prayer that we've had. We've been praying for, for many for many people over a long time, and the Lord has moved not in our own, not in our, our, not in our own time, but the Lord's time. The Lord's time is perfect. When David prayed eh, to the Lord in 2 Samuel 7, the emphasis was the Lord is sovereign. When, it, when, when David was praying to the Lord, eh, about building a temple for the Lord. This was, a this was a commendable desire to build a temple to the Lord and was something that kings in the ancient Near East eh, did eh, to their deities in thanksgiving and out of a desire for security from the deities. David wanted to do it, not because of what he could get, but out of wanting to bring glory to the Lord and wanting to be a, a place for the Lord to rest. And brothers and sisters, that should be our desire tonight. Our desire that we would pray that God would move in a mighty way in this nation, that he would have a nation of worshippers to his holy name. Tonight, we here in Zion have been praying for many things, not because we want to get this and we want to get that. As the, as the, as the, as the kings in the ancient Near East did, but because we want the Lord to be glorified and the things that we're praying for, like, for example, tonight for this revival. We pray for revival because we want God to be glorified. In a vassal's approach to the Lord, we want our God to be praised and worshipped in this nation in a mighty revival. As I've been mentioning in my studies of kingship, we're, uh, we are all kings and priests unto God. We each have control over 24 hours in a day. What part of that day is given to the Lord and our King? Just as the kings and high priests were anointed, which represents consecration to the Lord, anointing represents being set apart, and as vassals and servants to the Lord, our God, eh, we are servants to the Lord, and we have been set apart for God's glory. Our late pastor was anointed in his ministry. Why? Because he was a servant of the Lord. Praise God tonight. God is a people who are trusting in the Lord and not leaning in their own understanding. Tonight, 
I'm going to be. I, I, I'm, I'm speaking about what a blessing it is to be a vassal for God, to be a, a servant of God. Robert spoke in Wednesday. I've been. I've been healed, and he testified about uh, Linda. And Robert was talking about Calvary. He spoke for Isaiah 53. The Lord Jesus was that perfect example and how we should lead our lives. Throughout the Lord Jesus' life, he was about his father's business. The Lord Jesus, as I say, is a beautiful example of this vassal to God's glory. He led his life in complete submission to his father's will. When he was younger, he was, he was left in the temple. He's, uh, as we know, Mary and Joseph left the temple and assumed that the Lord Jesus was with them. And then when they realised he wasn't with them in the crowd, they went back to the temple to find him. And it says in Luke 2 and 48, and when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that he sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? Jesus was about his father's business. And it says in John chapter 8 and 42. And Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceed forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but of he that sent me. Jesus was that beautiful example of this vassal for the Lord's glory. As I read for Philippians chapter 2, what makes a, 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 a vassal, a, a, what makes a person a vassal? This is a question that can be answered by looking at two kings in Israel who, who failed to be vassal, a vassal kings and looked, and we can also look to two kings who the Lord was well pleased with as vassals to the Lord. The two kings that failed or could be considered antitypes of vassals to the Lord is first Abimelech. I was writing my essay about this, uh, Abimelech, the son of Gideon, whose name meant my father is king. He was an antitype of what a vassal king was. Gideon in Judges 8 was offered the role of king, but he rightfully declined that offer by claiming that the Lord was king in Israel. But at the same time, Gideon behaved in a regal manner, taking tributes from the spoils of war and having a golden ephod made in his own honour eh, of the victories that he wrought, which, eh, which is to say, which became a snare unto the Israelites. And it says that the Israelites went a whoring after it. Gideon had 70 sons and one of them, was a, a Abimelech, who was a, a, the son of a Gideon's Shechemite concubine. Upon Gideon's death, Abimelech appealed to his mother's side of the family to try to gather support for his claim to be a king. Abimelech's motivation was not for the glory of God, but was out of self-interest and greed. And the other antitype of the vassal of a, of a vassal king was King Saul. Saul was made king, as I uh, read at the beginning. Saul, Saul was made king uh, after the demands of the Israelites for uh, Saul to appoint uh, a king over them. Saul started off well, but he, did, he didn't want to wait upon the Lord when Samuel told him to wait until he arrived to, uh, so that Saul could deliver the sacrifice before the battle. The result was Saul lost the kingdom. But why was why did he lose the kingdom? The reason was Saul failed to realise that he was to be a vassal king, a servant to the Lord. The Lord God was king over Israel and Saul was to be his under king. Due to this disobedience, God removed the crown from Saul. And uh, another thing that Saul and Abimelech have in common is they were both killed by their armour bearers out of fear, not out of the fear of the Lord, but out of fear of human perception. The two kings, they are excellent examples of the type of king God wants 
eh, as vassal kings, as King David and our dear precious Lord Jesus. King David wasn't a perfect man, but he was a man after God's own heart. He and the Israelites, eh, he was the Israelites' most memorable king. Eh, what separated David from Saul was his passion for the Lord. When David heard of Goliath taunting the the armies of it, the armies of the Lord, it says in First Samuel seventeen and twenty six, and David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, "What shall be done to this man that kill that killeth this Philistine, and taketh away the approach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God?" King David's passion for the Lord eh, can be seen in the Psalms. The difference between Saul and David is that when David sinned, he repented of his sins, whereas Saul didn't. David had the opportunity to kill Saul, but he refrained from doing that because eh, he was aware that Saul at that point was the Lord's anointed. And with that anointing, Saul was still under the protection of God as a vassal king. The Lord Jesus is another perfect example of a vassal king, the servant king, as we were singing before the, we prayed. The Lord came into this world to do the will of his father. It says in John chapter six and verse 38, for I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but to do the will of him that sent me. And this is the father's will which sent me that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but every but, sh but should rise up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life and will rise up with him in the last days. Thomas Watson, the great Puritan, said of Christ being the servant, uh, uh, being this, uh, the vassal king, said that Christ's servants are called vassals of honour and a royal nation. Ser serving Christ en enables us with dignity. It is a great honour and a great privilege to serve Christ. Then to have uh, kings serve us. His kingdom is a spiritual kingdom, speaking of the Lord Jesus. He rules in the hearts of men. He sets up thrones where other kings, eh, where, other, where no other king does. He rules the will and affections. His power binds conscience. He subdues men's lusts and he will subdue our iniquities. That was such a blessing when I read that with Thomas Watson, that the Lord Jesus not only was a servant king, but he rose victoriously from the grave. Jesus took the lowly position eh, eh, when it, when, in the incarnation and, from the glo eh, and descended for glory to take on human flesh that he might fulfill the law and become that perfect sacrifice for us, for his people. This should co cause us to eh, just wait, our hearts to fill with wonder, love and praise to our great king, the king of kings, and the Lord of Lords. So in conclusion, the point I was trying to make tonight was we are vassals to God. We may not be uh, earthly kings, but we are kings and priests unto the Lord. The king that was, a, that was blessed by the Lord was a servant king, was a vassal king. They knew that it was the Lord who was sovereign. And brothers and sisters, tonight when we come to prayer, we know that in our own abilities, we can't change this nation. But we, we serve the living God. We serve the God that created the world in six days and on the seventh day he rested. Our God is sovereign and it, it, and it God, God spoke the world into, into existence when he said, let there be light. And brothers and sisters, there was light. And our prayer tonight, as we pray for this revival, that God would say to Scotland, let there be light. The thrill tonight is that the Lord wants, uh, wants us to remain faithful to him. King Saul offered the sacrifice before the battle and disobeyed the instruction of Samuel. Abimelech garnered support for his own selfish works. They, they both sought 
to get things done in their own strength. And at the end, that was their destruction and death. I gave two examples of two vassal kings, the Lord Jesus and King David. The characteristics was the heart was in service to God. It says in Acts 13 and 22, King David's heart, I beg your pardon, and when he, and when he had removed him, he raised him up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. What a blessing tonight, brothers and sisters, as I look at, the, at, at you tonight, as I see brothers and sisters who are men and women after God's own heart, who have been faithful to the Lord, even through trials and tribulations, they've you have remained faithful to God. That's such a blessing to myself, who failed the Lord on many occasions, that I can look to brothers and sisters who are excellent examples. As I spoke last time about being these trees that bring forth fruit in their season, exactly, there's, there's brothers and sisters here who have, had, who have been rooted uh, and grounded in the faith, and it's such an encouragement. Jesus was the ultimate example of a servant king. Jesus was a vassal to his father, and he is now, and, and he is king of kings and lord of lords. And it says in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 20, which he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and power, might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in the world, but also in that which is to come. And have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, that filleth all in all. Brothers and sisters, what a thrill this, uh, these couple of verses are to us tonight. You may be struggling, you may be going through a, a, a valley experience, but as this verse says, that God has raised them up and made them sit in the heavenly places. And brothers and sisters, we have been made to, we, we are part of the body of Christ. So we, as the body, I'll just read that again. Where am I? Ephesians chapter uh, 1 and verse 20, which he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but that which is to come and have put all things under his feet. If we are the body of Christ, all things are under our feet because we are part of the body of Christ. So what I was trying to say is you may be struggling, but trust in the Lord. Our God is sovereign. And whatever trial you may be going through, whatever thing you've been praying to the Lord about, trust in the Lord and lean not in your own understanding. And that's what we're doing tonight when we come and pray for this mighty revival. Jesus took the beating. He was crucified, but now he is, he is exalted high above all. He's king of kings and lord of lords. The vassal king is highly exalted and given the name which is above every name. It is with this in mind, brothers and sisters, that we come and pray for this mighty revival, that our precious Lord Jesus' name would be high and lifted up in our nation tonight, that God would move in a wonderful way, that we'd see many souls getting saved, that we'd see people getting healed that we've been praying for for a long time. Why? For one reason, God's glory. Let's come in thanksgiving to our King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen.